Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can determine the Pearson correlation coefficient in Python 3 and this is specifically Jupyter, Jupyter Lab. Uh, it's going to include both the coefficient itself and also the test if it's significant. Now the Pearson correlation is probably the most famous one to use if you have two uh, scale variables, so numbers only, and you want to check if there's a relationship between those two. It will range from minus 1 to plus 1, minus 1 perfect negative, plus 1 uh, perfect positive. Uh, 0 would indicate hardly any relationship. Positive relation means that if one goes up, the other one also goes up. So for example, the number of ice cream sold versus the temperature, the warmer it gets, the more ice creams are probably sold. And negative would mean the other way around. So for example, winter jackets versus temperature, the warmer it gets, the uh, uh, less winter jackets will be sold. Now there is no, for, for the in-between values, there is no formal way to determine it, if it's high, low or not. So what you can do is you can have a look at the absolute value and Ria and Parker, they came up with this little rule of thumb interpretation, but it can of course depend on the field you work in. To show you how this test can be done, I'll be using an example. And that example I will uh, load as a pandas data frame. So I'll first import pandas as pd. So I can abbreviate it to be uh, pd every time. If you've never used a package before, you first will have to install it. Exclamation sign pip install and the name of the package. That usually works, otherwise Google on how to install packages. Um, this goes for any package I might be using. Then I can use pandas read CSV to load my employee data file that I have stored and the head will show the first five records. Now for, ex for the example I'll be using the beginning salary versus the current salary which is salary. So I'll store those as a separate data frame and I'm going to drop any missing values. Now pandas has its own correlation coefficient function so you can simply use the new data frame and then core and it will give you by default the Pearson correlation. So as you can see that's between salary and um, the sorry, between salary and the beginning salary it's 0 0.88 so that's pretty strong. Um, you also see it the same number twice because here it's comparing salary and beginning salary and here the other way around so that's of course the same. The diagonal you can ignore because that's a correlation between the variable and itself so that's always perfectly the same. Now um, the with NumPy you can get the same result so if you would first import NumPy um, we convert our two fields to separate pandas, uh, sorry, numpy arrays, and then we can use pan, uh, numpy's correlation coefficient function and we should get the same result, again the 0 0.88. Neither pandas nor numpy will actually show the significance, the p-value, so is this, do we have enough data to make this actually even significant? Um, so, but there are more packages, so for example side by stats with Pearson core, if we import that function, then we can simply use Pearson R, the two fields that we are interested in. Uh, we don't even need to remove any of the missing values. So I'm uh, using the original data here. And you can see it's the same result, the 0 0.88. The first one is the correlation coefficient and the second one is the so-called p-value or sometimes known as the significance. The E minus 155 is the scientific notation. So there are actually, I think it's 154 zeros before this 8 and then 0 dot, so and then 154 zeros, A to 0 through, so it's very very close, uh, very close to 0. It's not actually 0, so often you will see it reported as 0 .000, um, or simply reported as less than 0 .001. Um, usually if it's below 0 0.05 we would consider it significant. Pingoian can also do this, so if I import the core function from Pingoian, we get nicely the same result, the 0 0.88 again, and here's the p-value. It also gives some other uh, things, but we can ignore those for now. Uh, we can also use research pi, so that's core case, and that actually also gives us 
the same results the 0 0.88 is here and again the zeros which is uh, basically this one and that's about it so um, that's how you can quickly get those with different packages uh, if you're really interested I'll leave a link to this Jupyter notebook uh, and in the appendix I actually go over the formulas um, which takes a little bit longer and uh, but they eventually come up with the same result so I try to avoid packages in the appendix as much as possible do everything according to the formula so it might not be the most efficient way of doing this um, and then eventually I get the same 0 0.88 and the T value and then I do need a package to convert the so-called T value into a uh, p-value which also needs the degrees of freedom and then finally I can use that um, the t distribution from scipy stats and then I get the exact same result for my p-value okay that was it uh, I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching